Narcissist, a term that gets thrown around left and right, seemingly more and more every year. I mean, it's almost common knowledge that a lot of people will do almost anything for attention and validation. So why does this word keep getting thrown around, not to mention what it even means? To answer all of these questions, we need to learn more about the patient zero, if you will, behind narcissism. Of course, we start off in Greece, where a lot of our stories and myths originate from. Narcissus was a young, good-looking man. Everyone around him admired his looks, although he did not really care, not only about the compliments, but also about other people's feelings. One day, a nymph, Echo, saw Narcissus and fell in love with him. The nymph had a curse on her. She could only repeat the last words she heard. You could see that this made the situation a bit tricky. Echo couldn't express her infatuation to Narcissus. She wanted to call out to him and tell him what she felt but was forbidden by the curse. However, one day when Narcissus was walking in the forest, he sensed that he was not alone. This made him shout, Who's there? Echo answered, Who's there? Again, Narcissus shouted, Come out! And Echo repeated, Come out! Not being able to handle it anymore, Echo revealed herself rushing to Narcissus in an attempt to embrace him. Despite this, Narcissus was repulsed, pushing her away. I would rather die than let you touch me, he spat, leaving Echo shattered and broken, retreating into the forest. All of this led Nemesis, the god of revenge, to feel bad for Echo. She wanted to show Narcissus how it felt to love someone and not be loved back. Therefore, she led him to a still, crystal clear pool in a part of the forest he had never been to. This was the first time Narcissus saw its reflection. When he saw it, he fell into a deep state of infatuation, not knowing that it was his own reflection he was looking at. He became a prisoner to his own image. Every time he tried touching the water, his reflections disappeared, leaving him desperate. Days turned into nights, and nights into days. Narcissus could still not tear himself away from the water. Weakened by hunger, thirst, and an insatiable yearning for love, he understood the cruel twist of his fate. With his last ounce of energy, he leaned over to kiss the reflection he so loved, tumbling into the water and disappearing into the arms of his own illusion. So there, at the spot where he died, a flower sprang up, the petals leaning over the water. The flower was named Narcissus, a symbol of beauty, love, and the tragedy that can only strike those who love themselves. But why is this story important? First of all, do you recognize any of Narcissus' behaviors in people around you today? Of course, the story is highly exaggerated, but it still shows us the core traits that a narcissist can show. This leads us to what is known as a narcissist's prayer. That didn't happen, and if it did, it wasn't that bad, and if it was, that's not a big deal. And if it is, that's not my fault. And if it was, I didn't mean it. And if I did, you deserved it. This might be something that you recognize even stronger than the story of Narcissus. The Narcissist's prayer really exemplifies how a narcissist behaves towards other people. This gives us a baseline understanding of how to recognize a narcissist. But are more people becoming narcissists? We know that a while back, no one outside of mental health professionals talked about narcissism. People were more concerned with lacking self-esteem, which they believed was a core problem behind a lot of challenges in life. This lighted the fire of the increasing amount of self-love. The 70s is a perfect example of this, where the self-love cult spun out of control and is carried right into the 21st century. You might call bullshit, but a 2010 study found that the percentage of college students exhibiting narcissistic personality traits based on a widely used diagnostics test has increased by more than half since the early 1980s to 30%. Keep in mind, this was before social media was widespread, so we can only imagine what the increase would be from 2010 to 2023. In the book, Narcissism Epidemic, by psychology professors John M. Twenge and Keith Campbell, it is shown that narcissism has increased as quickly as obesity has since the 1980s. This is a costly problem. Whilst full-blown narcissists often have high levels of personal satisfaction, they often create havoc and misery around them. Their friends, kids, parents, any relationship can and will be infested by a narcissist. Right, so now we understand the problem deeper, but how do we solve it? Well, we want to at least minimize the narcissistic tendencies that are increasing. Maybe you have grown more narcissistic over time. The elephant in the room is, of course, social media. In the story I told you about Narcissus, he falls in love not with himself, but with his reflection. The modern version of this would be Narcissus falling in love with his own Instagram feed, starving himself to death, 
while compulsively counting his followers. This is what philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau called a more proper, a kind of self-love based on the opinions of others. He, and probably you, consider that unnatural and unhealthy. But self-love is not all bad, it just has to be done in a healthy way. A healthy self-love that leads to true happiness, according to Rousseau, is called amour de soi. It builds up your inner well-being instead of feeding the craving to be admired and accepted by others. How do we cultivate amour de soi? It requires us to be fully alive in the moment instead of being virtually alive while constantly wondering what other people think. Enjoying a beautiful hike alone, reading a good book or having a nice meal without posting it on social media could be an expression of amour de soi. Narcissists will most likely always be a part of your everyday life in some form. Maybe your colleague, partner or friend. But this shouldn't stop you from living your life and taking your relationships to their fullest potential. Recognize the signs of a narcissist and you won't be manipulated for the worse. Instead, you'll just learn how to deal with it. And speaking of yourself, you don't need external validation. You need validation from yourself. So don't be like a narcissist seeking it from others. Cultivate it from within yourself and you will be unstoppable.